thank the organizer in particular for Maurizio for um, setting up this very nice workshop in this great place and uh, inviting me and giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I, um, sort of the third part of this uh, mechanics session, I, I suppose. And, um, okay, I seem not to, oh, no, it works. Okay, and um, yes, so I'm, uh, I'm working actually not at the University of the Basque Country, but at the Donostia International Physics Center, which is an independent uh, research institution, and I'm uh, employed by the Ica Basque Foundation, which uh, I may advertise is offering uh, tenure track and tenured positions uh, to all fields of science every year. So have a look in next spring, the next, um, will come out and we welcome applications from everywhere. So uh, what I want to talk about is a um, uh, particular implementation of um, QIP in the solid state setting and I'm not talking about uh, five nines or six nines like we uh, heard in the, in the previous talk, but we'll see that there are actually some um, surprising connections between this uh, solid state implementation and the field of, of trapped ions. And, um, the work I'm presenting is, uh, has been done in the last couple of years together with um, several people. The group at the Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics of Ignatius Sirak, where I was working previously, uh, prior to my present uh, position. Uh, and it was led by Martin Schütz, who is now, who was at MPQ and is now a postdoc in Michal Lukin's group in Harvard, and uh, by Johannes Knautzer, who is a PhD student in the Max Planck group. And we also collaborate uh, heavily with uh, Lieben van der Seidem in Delft. Um, the um, topic of my talk are surface acoustic waves um, as a tool for uh, quantum information processing in the solid state uh, setting. And we've just had a very nice um, example of a talk that shows out how important uh, bosonic fields and bosonic modes are in, uh, in quantum information processing. The I trapped ions were the first system in which uh, the, the mechanical mode by which the ions oscillates were used as a quantum bus, and of course lasers are used in all the manipulations one does for the, or now microwaves, um, of the uh, internal states of the ions, and um, also in many other approaches, circuit QD, uh, all the quantum optical approaches we have, um, bosonic modes which play a crucial role. In the um, uh, implementation that tries to use uh, semiconductor nanostructure, semiconductor quantum dots, um, this, there is no natural, no such natural candidate for a bosonic mode. Of course one can also use light and one can try to use uh, circuit QD, but these are not natural to the system. They have to somehow attach, have to be brought in. And um, so the talk today will be about um, a bosonic mode that is right present in the system that has so far been a nuisance and that we try to make use of and turn into an, and turn into an asset. And this was um, motivated by um, recent experimental successes in using these um, surface acoustic waves uh, to, for at the moment not yet coherent quantum information tasks like moving um, moving electrons between separate quantum dots, loading and unloading them, also trapping excitons in, uh, in, in lattices and studying the interaction of these excitons. And um, uh, recently, this field has also been uh, explored in the context of, um, of uh, superconducting qubits, uh, placing uh, uh, superconducting qubits in a, um, in a surface acoustic wave cavity and uh, demonstrating um, cavity Q effects and single phonon coupling and the like. And so the aim of this talk is to um, introduce surface acoustic modes and uh, indicate that they can actually play a, um, a useful role and a success, might be able to play a successful role as a quantum bus um, in um, between quantum dot qubits. And um, also as, um, as standing waves that could uh, provide the basis for um, for acoustic lattices and the trapping of, of carriers, charged and non-charged carriers in semiconductor structures that could uh, lead to interesting um, applications in quantum simulation. So I fortunately don't have to talk much about uh, spin qubits and quantum dots because we had a very nice uh, presentation on this topic by uh, Daniel Loss a few days ago. And so I will just um, briefly remind you because it's sort of the motivating setting. I will not talk much about quantum dots in the later part of the talk, but the motivating setting is that we have these 
um, semiconductor structures, uh, heterostructures, where it's an interface between two different um, uh, semiconductors uh, to, to the electron gas is formed, which we can manipulate by applying uh, voltages, uh, gate voltages to the top of this structure, and thereby one can deplete uh, the, the two deck in many places, and uh, the remaining uh, puddles of, um, of two deck um, contain a, a finite number of, of electrons that can only tunnel out of it, and whose, uh, whose number one can by now control very well, so down to the single uh, electron level. And um, these are the, the electron spin qubits that uh, were the basis of Daniel Loss's proposal and of many experiments in Delft and Harvard and uh, Copenhagen and many other places. And um, that are uh, the objects that we would like to address uh, with the surface acoustic waves. Um, the um, uh, spin, cu spin qubit um, QIP proposal has um, is one of the oldest uh, around, and um, while one has uh, and has a number of advantages, like the closeness to the semiconductor technology, like the high compactness, it's probably among the smallest qubits, uh, very good isolation from many, uh, from especially charge uh, noise, and um, fast gate speeds. Um, and while a few qubit demonstrations have been achieved, one is the field is actually quite behind the. Uh, trapped ions and, and circuit QED settings in their, um, um, that one still talks about two, three qubits and 90% and or maybe 90 something, 96% fidelities. There are two um, bottlenecks or two outstanding challenges where many ideas exist but not really um, um, an accepted solution. Uh, in this field, it is how do we couple uh, across longer ranges, not just neighboring quantum dots, but dots that are not directly interacting, that are far from each other, and also how would one build structures that go beyond the 1D setting. So arrays of dots, there is a very clear path to it, but uh, 2D structures, people have ideas, but there is no very um, yeah, no accepted approach. And um, as I, I like to indicate, maybe the surface acoustic waves can help in both of these, uh, both of these challenges. So, um, the outline of the remainder of the talk. Um, what are surface acoustic waves and uh, what may they, may they be useful for? Um, so, I will give a, a very brief introduction only on the surface acoustic waves because what I'm really using is just their bosonic nature and uh, particular uh, aspects of how they couple to, um, to spins or to charges, mainly charges in, uh, in semiconductor structures. Uh, and the applications that I want to discuss, and this will also be um, rather a brief, both of them, uh, will put the emphasis on the, on the last one, is, um, so this could form the basis for an analog to cavity QED. We can build resonators for these surface acoustic waves, which can serve as a quantum bus or a means to mediate coherently interaction between uh, several qubits in this structure. Um, or to convert stationary qubits into flying qubits that move then with the speed of sound in this material. And uh, the newer result and the one that I would like to advertise more is this idea of uh, using, creating standing waves of these, uh, of these uh, waves and uh, trying to trap uh, electrons in a periodic structure with them. So surface acoustic waves. Um, it's just a particular type of uh, phonon that uh, propagates close to the surface, as the name says. Um, and that is sort of, uh, th these are particular solutions to the wave equations that are, uh, appear because, the, uh, because of the boundary condition at the surface. That there is, kind of it's a, it's a stress-free surface, there is no force acting there, and, and this uh, leads to these solutions. The most uh, well-known modes are the, the Rayleigh modes. Um, there are others. Um, the nice thing about them is that they are close to the surface, that they are confined naturally to within a wavelength of the surface. So uh, if one wants to couple strongly, there is already one dimension one doesn't have to worry much about. We get a natural, we get uh, directly a, one of our, uh, a confinement to within one wavelength. Um, and also they can be um, addressed, uh, guided, created by surface patterning. And so they are accessible to us, more easily accessible than, for example, bulk waves would be. Um, and finally, they can be, their properties can be rather readily augmented by uh, creating heterostructures of materials that have particular 
um, properties in their reaction to mechanical stress, so piezoactive materials in particular, that uh, will lead to the fact that then these mechanical oscillations are accompanied by electric or magnetic fields, depending on the material we use. And that uh, makes this a, a system that uh, can be fairly universal because it, uh, you can design it such that it, carries both, that it carries magnetic or electric or mechanical or all of them. Uh, and, and that can, uh, that allows you to talk to many different things and may also make this an interesting um, system to uh, build hybrid systems. Um, and then clearly they can play the role of optical fields and modes in, in the solid state setting. So the, the analogy is very clear. One can try to transport electrons like one could try to uh, atoms in an optical tweezer. One can use them to drive uh, gates um, of, of qubits. One can think of acoustic lattices in analogy to the optical lattices. Uh, and one can build coherent modes, study coherent modes and their interacting interaction with, uh, with qubits and so do uh, an analog to cavity QED. And um, so people talk about quantum acoustics now in this context. So this is an ugly slide, and I will uh, remove it right away. I just want to show this, uh, these waves follow rather simple, in, in the end, rather simple equations. So you describe them by just the, the wave equation at the, uh, at the surface. The black thing is uh, for non-piezo materials. It's just the wave equation for the elongation U uh, from the equilibrium positions. And then in piezo materials, there is a linear coupling between uh, an electric uh, potential or electric field to these um, mechanical elongations and, uh, and the back action uh, that is uh, described by the um, piezoelectric uh, and the um, dielectric tensor of the, of the material. And um, the, apart from the, these wave equations, an important uh, aspect are, is the surface boundary condition that, uh, that they have to satisfy. Uh, and that leads to, to the solutions that we, that we will be using. But, uh, I don't want to go into these uh, details here. The, um, what I want to uh, emphasize is that um, in these piezoelectric materials, not only is it interesting because we can couple then if the large wave propagates to charges easily, but we can also excite these waves and detect these waves easily by their electric fields or all electrically. And this is uh, used also in many devices that most of you have in your pocket in, in cell phones. Uh, surface acoustic devices are used as bandpass filters and the like. And um, the, the workhorse of all of this is the so-called interdigital uh, transducer, which is, a, which is a, an array of, of uh, gates on top of the structure with a particular periodic spacing. And if one puts an alternating voltage on this, it excites the surface acoustic wave. Or if one takes off the voltage, or if, one, if a proper wave propagates towards this structure, one can read off uh, the amplitude intensity of the wave from the, from the voltage. And um, this plays the role of a, of a laser or of a microwave source in this, in this um, structure. Um, in, in addition to this, one can also pattern, basically create bright reflectors, bright reflectors for this. So uh, long arrays of, of grooves on the, on the uh, substrate that will reflect particular wavelengths. And uh, this way, people have constructed high-quality surface acoustic wave resonators. High-quality in this context means up to Q factors 10 to the 4, 10 to the 5, um, and um, which we'll, we'll see is uh, good enough for, for strong coupling to, to qubits. Um, and one can also, by, by, uh, pa by placing material on top of the surface of the structure, um, uh, pre prepare uh, guides, uh, channels in which the surface acoustic waves can propagate while they are being constrained by the changed uh, boundary conditions due to the uh, heavy material that you put on the surface, for example. And um, just to show how these things look in papers published on that subject, um, here is by the uh, Oxford group. Um, they studied the surface acoustic wave resonators in the quantum regime, and you see here the IDTs to create the material, and here the periodic mirrors in order to, uh, to catch them and to contain them. Um, and here is an example of such a, uh, a waveguide. Um, also, uh, this is from the Grenoble group. The similar types of experiments are also done in Oxford. 
uh, where, again, an IDT creates uh, the surface acoustic wave and it then travels through this, uh, through this channel. In this case, the interesting thing is that it can pick up electrons and carry them through this channel and actually carry, carry them back and forth many, many tens of micrometers without uh, losing them. Um, okay, so I want just to give a few numbers that sort of to sketch the ballparks of, this, of the structures we, we talk about. So these frequencies can be a couple of gigahertz, maybe up to 50 gigahertz. Energies of these waves, we typically talk about uh, tens uh, of micro EV, which means in order to be in the ground state of these oscillators, these resonators, we would need uh, dilution fridge temperatures, which are um, well, regularly achieved in, in quantum dot experiments. Speed of sound, um, the low of the slowest of these waves in typical materials like gallium arsenide is three uh, kilometers per second. And the wavelength we talk about are fractions to several micrometers. Um, and so one nice thing about them is that they are actually much smaller than uh, the comparable uh, microwaves are because of the slower speed of sound that means the structures that one can get are significantly more compact. Um, so, the, okay, so I, I think I will actually be very brief in this, uh, in this discussion on the, on the quantum acoustodynamics or the QAD analog because it's uh, the, the only important point or the only uh, to me question about this was do the numbers kind of work out? So do we couple strongly enough to, or can we couple strongly enough to an interesting qubit um, in order to reach uh, reach a strong coupling regime between, between this two-level system and, uh, and the resonator. Once you have this, you end up with a Rabi model or a James Cummings model and, uh, and you basically can uh, repeat all the stuff that people have been doing uh, in, in cavity QED with these. And um, so th this is um, that I want to uh, um, only indicate that one can actually find uh, a number of variety of systems in which this in which this nice regime can be can be reached. So the, the general setting that we have in mind is is um, uh, an artificial atom typically placed between uh, such mirrors, in which um, um, of a finite quantity factor we will have losses that go out into the into a, a quantum channel, so that leak out of the cavity in order to propagate, and others that will leak out into the into the um, bulk of the system that are truly lost. So we, we have two types of losses in the, in the system. Um, and um, we want to, uh, we, we think of coupling this here and using an output mode in order to communicate possibly with other nodes of a, of a network. Uh, and I point out, I mean, I will not pursue this, but since we had trapped ions in this, in this talk, in this session, uh, these electric fields accompanying the surface acoustic waves, they extend to outside of the material as well. And so one, one actually can create uh, oscillating uh, fields or couple to a, to a mode uh, um, with, with charges that are several uh, micrometers uh, um, so up to 10 micrometers or so on top of the surface. And so this may be an interesting way to couple solid state and quantum optical qubits. So the system that we have, uh, the systems that we have looked at, um, the, the most, so we always think of, uh, mostly think of uh, piezoelectric material like gallium arsenide as the, as the standard example. Um, and we think of, um, so then it couples very strongly to a charge qubit, but charge qubits don't live very long. I mean, we saw they, they have only nanoseconds of coherence time. And so what we are mostly interested in for this coupling is actually a, a double quantum dot spin qubit in which one has the capability to shift between a charged uh, admixture and a purely spin uh, setting depending on what one wants to do. Uh, Daniel Loss mentioned this in his talk as well. You have uh, you use the singlet, triplet state of a double, two electrons and double quantum dot, but then you change the bias between these two dots, and that will sort of give a, um, a higher weight to uh, the singlet state that is localized in the lower energy dots, and, and thereby your spin qubit acquires a small charge uh, contribution, and this is what we use to couple to the surface acoustic waves. Uh, and in that case, one can, uh, if one orients the quantum dot properly uh, with the geometry of the surface acoustic wave, one can achieve um, coupling strength in the order of tens of megahertz, uh, and cooperativities for currently used um, 
uh, resonators that uh, can reach uh, can reach a hundred. So I have about ten minutes. Okay. Good. Yeah. So then I will go over several slides now uh, without showing them. Um, well. Well. Hmm. Okay. Well, in this case, maybe I go with this one. Is <laughs> um, Christoph here? Or somebody who. Sorry that I. Uh, I didn't touch it. So I'm, I'm, I uh, didn't go into the, the details of these of these uh, cavity QD. If there are questions, we can you can ask them uh, later or in the break. And um, the idea that I want now to advertise, and I will actually have to rush this uh, bit, is um, can one um, sort of uh, could one also use these things uh, to replicate the success that people had trapping. Uh, atoms with laser light can we trap electrons or other quasi, quasi particles in the solid in a, in a quantum well in a two deck um, using uh, the, using these surface acoustic waves? Um, I find this so one thing that I or find it interesting from two reasons. First, uh, that um, you um, yeah, there you can study. Um, for example, the, the, the Fermi Hobart model using these electrons in a regime that is very untypical to um, com, com, yeah, you can you can choose a length scale that is on the micrometer range. You have very light particles, very strong uh, charge, and so it's a different regime from the one that can be uh, probed in uh, in uh, atomic systems. And uh, you will have uh, not only these electrons, but you have a whole bunch of quasi particles uh, available that you can, in principle, yeah, these can be. Um, Electrons that have an intrinsic spin orbit coupling. This can be particles that uh, are in a quantum hole system and carry a flux. It can be um, p particles that have a very strange uh, dispersion relation if you pu uh, put them in a in a unusual band. And so you get a new zoo of particles to play with in this uh, in this um, uh, creating a periodic structure in which they are trapped and in which you can study their interaction. Hopefully, so the um, okay. Thank you. And um, uh, but what we'll have to see is whether we can trap any of them at all. And I think this is all that I will be able to, uh, to uh, talk about now. The basic idea is that we shine in a surface acoustic wave that os oscillates rapidly. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And. Um, uh, and so let's talk about electrons for the moment. So there is an accompanying electromagnetic field that um, kind of accelerates the electrons um, back and forth. And, um, and so at first the idea is not why should they stop. But, and the idea is actually the same as is used in, in trapped ions, but in a very different parameter regime, that you try to do this so fast that the particle is too inert to, to follow and that it uh, simply uh, cannot decide anymore. It sits at the node of the electric field and uh, cannot move from there uh, as the field oscillates very rapidly. And um, um, OK, so something is. Uh, Really bad with it. I didn't know that PDFs could be so harmful. Um, I, okay. I, I have to reboot it. Um, I, yes, there is another copy actually on the stick, um, but I, I can't open anything. Um, 
Ah, there is a there is a computer. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Let's, um, okay. Yeah. My, well, that's um, so. Um, okay. I think I, I maybe I, I tried to convey the idea uh, without pictures and formulas. So we we have this. So this is this is a, now we we apply a periodic uh, field or periodic potential. To these particles, and so that's the normal setting of the um, in which one can use the, the Floquet formalism. And in order to understand how the how these uh, okay, so you again use the uh, the the dangerous one. I probably could you could you use the file three S without two? Yes. Because uh, maybe there is something uh, mm -hmm. wrong with that. It, it, it is, can, can we open a different file? Uh, no, because this this is the I think the the one that didn't work. So this other one, the, the lower one, the, no, this Trieste without knock there. Okay, it's basically the same. There is uh, only a uh, yeah. it's only the wave equation is not there. Yes, to the conclusions. Yes. <laughs> Okay. No. Okay. I I think I I have to uh, improvise this. I I don't know what uh, what I did wrong. There is nothing nothing bad in this file. Uh, so what what? Um, uh, okay. What we have is um, and I'm I'm. We have this, the position of the, so what I'm looking at is the position of the electron as it is exposed to this file, uh, to, this, to this field, or to this potential. This will be, well, okay, maybe I, should, maybe I should sketch things here, right? We have here on our two deck, um, here in this, in this uh, area, the, the electron sits, a surface acoustic wave passes, which, has a, which comes with an oscillating uh, potential. We consider one standing sine wave. And so we, we would have here an, say, W. Uh, I think so. Oh, OK. Very good. Oh. Can, can we, could we go directly to, the, to this um, acoustic lattice? Um, Well, but but uh, I mean I, I don't want to take people's break away. Yeah. Okay, okay, no. Okay, yeah, then go to the conclusions. And can I go to the conclusions, which are there? Right? And can I go back? Okay. Ah, uh -huh. oh, no. Well, this is just. Uh, okay. Okay, then I, yeah. Um, okay, I'll try to, I'll try to, uh, to do this, so. Um, and so we have a, uh, we have a standing, a standing wave that is ti has time dependence and, and uh, spatial periodicity. And that, that's sort of the, um, the coupling to this electron comes from the fact that there is an electric field in a, that oscillates in this way. And um, the, the range in which we want to work now is the one in which this omega is a large number, um, so that uh, this uh, ponderer mode of uh, trapping um, works. And, uh, if one um, and basically one can now do uh, Floquet theory and um, and uh, go into the uh, Floquet. If if I, if we have something like this a theorem quite close to the Bloch theorem holds, so the solutions will be periodic. Will can be written as a product of one um, quasi energy that uh, and uh, and a periodic solution. And the periodic solution will be a high speed solution, will come, will, will oscillate with this. So this is the time scale we are not interested in. We kind of want to average this out and we are interested in these quasi energies. And that's what we are, what we are looking for. So we would like to uh, obtain an effective time uh, independent Hamiltonian by sort of uh, um, considering uh, slower, slower time scales than the, one, than the one given here. And if one, um, uh, if certain, Conditions hold, like for example, that this here is uh, smaller than one, and that this is large. 
uh, and that this here um, is not <coughs> is not too strong. One can um, okay. Well, um, I don't know. one can uh, obtain a, an effective uh, an effective um, time independent potential that is um, that is just a sine square. One can so I've written now classical equations of motion. One can do the same thing uh, using a Hamiltonian, doing a uh, going in a rotating system and uh, expanding the effective Hamiltonian in different in in terms of uh, omega over one, and then keeping the lowest. Uh, terms and then one gets uh, exactly the same thing. One gets a, a sine square uh, quantum potential and uh, and a v square divided by two m um, kinetic term. And um, uh, so and now okay. The what we want now what one has to study is when is when does this give a, when does this separation of time scales really work? And um, and I think I can, I will only try to. Uh, sort of convey the, the numbers that, uh, that become important here. So here, there, there is the mass of the particle that is uh, standing there. There is a, the, um, the frequency and the k vector of the surface acoustic wave. From this, we get the speed of sound, which is another important parameter. And we actually see that we can, um, uh, that we can uh, get here for this effective potential some small number times so if I'm if I'm now looking at a at a single site, expand around the center of the site, I get a I get a um, harmonic potential with a with a particular um, trapping strength here, where this E S is uh, the um, is the kinetic energy that this uh, particle that we try to trap would have if it were moving with the speed of sound of this wave. And this number is um, kind of a very important parameter, uh, material parameter that is governing these conditions that, we, that I'm putting here on the first slide that I can show again. Um, which, um, so can I take two minutes or so? Um, which, uh, which is the sort of the, the chain of sufficient conditions that we've derived in the pages that are not shown. Um, in order to see that the particle is not only trapped, but even if, uh, if uh, assuming that the particle is there, is still suffering from dissipation, uh, it is still not heating up, even though it is moving very fast due to this uh, this high speed driving. It is moving with such a low amplitude that it is uh, not heating up. So this is what we are. Um, um, so this is the gamma is is the, the dissipation and, and heating rate that um, that. Uh, we um, we have to deal with, and uh, we need this dissipation to be slow compared to the uh, correlation time of the of the bath in order to make the Markov assumption, which is in there. That's the first inequality. The second is that we will create in the end from this here a trap that has a trap depth of uh, or a trap frequency of uh, that we call omega zero. So that's a slow trapping frequency. Of course, this frequency should still be large compared to the temperature that we work at. Otherwise, we will not uh, be able to do, to the ground state. So second inequality. Third inequality is um, that, um, of course, this frequency should be very slow compared to the driving frequency in order for our separation of time scales to work and for this potential to apply. And so we can neglect all the higher order terms. And finally, and that's sort of the, the constraint that we'll um, if, if, this, if this large frequency would not still correspond to an energy small compared to this kinetic energy here, then um, the particle we would just uh, move too quickly um, and, and we would not have a single a bound state in the potential that we create this way. And so we have a pretty tough uh, number of constraints. Um, and I will, not, I will not go through the... Uh, through the numbers um, that I'm estimating here for, for a typical gallium arsenide system, just to say that all these inequalities can be nicely satisfied if we find a system that, uh, in which this, uh, this ES is on the order of 100 micro EV. Uh, and so now comes the, the first downer is that in our favorite system of volume arsenide, this is unrealistic. So their speed of sound is too slow. The electrons are very light. So electrons in gallium arsenide, it will not work this way. Um, but there are, uh, of course, ways around this. 
Um, so we have to look for materials and for um, uh, particles which have larger mass, a larger speed of sound. Um, and um, this can be done both by looking at materials or by um, building heterostructures in which we can enhance the speed of sound. And we have here um, investigated a number of, of options where you see that this uh, important uh, figure of merit can reach up to several thousand. If one, uh, but one has to admit, none of the, except for, for the silicon uh, and the gallium arsenide, none of these are uh, sort of routinely used materials. Um, so these are 2D, uh, 2D materials. These are holes in, in, in gallium nitride and so on. Um, so I, d I think I'm, um, yes. So we looked at uh, what kind of quantum simulation for a Hubbard model this would allow, um, but I will not, um, will not be able to. Uh, so this is, yeah, it, well, you can, get, you can get numbers that are, that are um, uh, that, that can, uh, these are all micro EV energies, so you can, can get, uh, you can get in the range where you, where you have particles that are deeply trapped in this, in this, in this one or two D array and interact with, um, uh, where the tunneling strength uh, can be comparable to the on-site interaction. Um, and so it, it might be a, <coughs> might be an approach um, to, to building, um, to studying then well-controlled, tunable, movable, uh, many-body quantum systems that can then also be moved next to a single quantum dot or quantum point contact, which would allow you to read out uh, probably a single site resolution, um, these, uh, these structures. Um, and okay, so I apologize for uh, not showing you the, the, the slides that I wanted to show. Uh, I've, well, I, I don't know what went wrong. Um, so the, the um, summary I want to say is that these surface acoustic waves, I think, uh, provide, well, I mean, um, a versatile and, uh, and um, promising new tool in the toolbox of, uh, of semiconductor um, quantum information processing. Um, one, I mean, even in gallium arsenide, you can couple strongly to spin qubits, and you're, in principle, uh, capable of doing um, uh, high cooperativity uh, uh, cavity QED type experiments um, and uh, classical, strong classical fields would be able to trap, move and, um, and couple qubits, uh, electron, uh, electron spins in sufficiently engineered materials or heavier particles like trions, like excitons, um, or even in gallium arsenide if you apply a strong magnetic field, maybe I say this as last, <laughs> You make these particles in principle, you know, the, the, the particles of the quantum hall effect are in principle infinitely heavy particles. So they have a flat, uh, flat dispersion relation. And those can be trapped in, in gallium arsenide at fields of few te Tesla, no problem with this, uh, with this approach. So that's all I uh, want to say. Here I thank uh, my co-workers again, and I thank you for your patience and your attention.